Hello everyone, my name is Jason Ryman, and in this video I'll be showing you how to build and package your game using Steampipe. For those that don't know, Steampipe is what we use to deliver full downloads and updates for any of the games on Steam. So a couple of the requirements before we get started on how to use Steampipe. I'll need to have onboarded onto the Steamworks site. I'll need to have a Steam account with access to the Steamworks site that also has the permissions to edit and publish at metadata. I'll need to have downloaded the latest Steamworks SDK. Uh, I'll need obviously a set of game files that we want to use to package our game up. And I'll need an app ID for that game. And an app ID on Steam is really a unique identifier for Steam. So in this case, we've got a Steampipe tutorial game set up, which we're going to use here for the test. Uh, I've got myself logged in already. And I'm going to begin by going to the app landing page here. My, my account doesn't actually have very many permissions to do a whole lot of things, which is why some of the things are grayed out, but that's fine for what we need. Uh, the next part will be going to the Edit Steamworks Settings page. And this is where we'll go to change the name of the game for how it appears on Steam, and also other things like setting up stats or achievements or workshop integration, uh, and also setting up how the game is going to be installed on Steam. So the next place to go to would be the configuration page, which is under installation. And the config tab here is really what uh, defines how the game gets installed. So we've got our install folder, which by default is just going to be the name of the app ID when it was created. Uh, I can also change this right now because the app itself is set to be unavailable, which basically means it's not yet released. Uh, the next part that I'll want to do though is set an an app launch option so that Steam actually knows how to run the game when it's launched from the client. Let's do that now. And I'm going to want this to actually point to the executable that Steam's going to run. And for this test, I'm also going to change the OS to only be available on Windows since I know in this example, this is only going to work on Windows. So once those are set, we can hit update here. And that's going to make the changes pending and it won't actually, nothing's actually live yet. Uh, and there's one other place we want to go to before we make that live, which is the depots page. And depots are essentially what are used uh, to package and contain all the files that Steam downloads. So an app ID is kind of a unique identifier on Steam. Depots are what make up an app ID and uh, they're kind of like zip files is another way to think of them. By default, I'll also have one depot ID already set up for the app. And again, because I know in this test, uh, it's only going to work on Windows, I can set this to be Windows only and then hit save changes. Now at a bare minimum, your app ID is going to have at least one depot ID. But if you wanted to set up multiple depot IDs, this is the page where you do that. But now that that's set, let's actually publish this so that those changes are all live. And before we do that, we can hit view diffs. Let's just see what is actually going to happen. As you can see here, we've made some changes to the config section and the depot section. And we want to make those really live by clicking that and then entering the very secret password of Steamworks and hit really publish. So now that that's all published, we can go and actually define how this gets built via Steam command. And that's going to be available under the SDK tools. So under tools and then content builder, we want to first start under the scripts folder. And there's two files in here by default, uh, at least one for your app ID and then a file per depot ID. So in our case, again, we're just going to need these two. Let's just change the file names to begin with. Even though this isn't required, the file name kind of just helps us show what's going on. And now let's look at the app build script here. And again, this definitely needs to be changed to what our actual app ID is going to be. Uh, we can optionally change some of these settings as well. Like the description here is just gets set on the build tab. Uh, depot output is used for temporary files and also some log files. 
content root here is going to use going to be used to actually know where to look for all the game files. So we can leave it as content for now, and that's perfectly fine. But let's also change this to be the actual depot ID we need and the file it should be looking towards. Then under the depot script, get, change this to be the actual depot ID. And by default, what it's really going to be looking under is this content folder. And then because local path is just set to be star, anything in this folder would get packaged up under this depot ID. Now for my case, I kind of know that this is just going to be a Windows only build. So let's create a subfolder here and then take all the files that I want to package and place that in, in the subfolder. Now because I've done that, I want to put the same subfolder here. That way now everything under Windows content will be delivered and packaged up in the base of this depot. So let's save this. I've got all my files here. So really the next step is to use Steam command to build everything. I've already got myself logged into Steam command here. Uh, so it's just really a simple matter of running the command run app build and then point that to the scripts file that I want to run. and hope it all works. And the game itself wasn't very big, so it didn't take very long. Uh, bigger games will obviously take a bit longer, but that was it. We've just built the game on Steam, although it's still not live yet. So the next step after we do that is we go to the Builds tab here. And as you can see, we've actually got our description here. Uh, we've got what depot is being used in this build. And if we want, we can even inspect that just to see what we've got. So again, this is kind of essentially what Steam's going to download if that build is set live. So we've got all the files that I essentially told it to package up. That size looks about right. And then the only other step left here is to actually set it live in the default branch. Uh, there are different branches that I'll talk about in a further video. But basically, uh, default branch is the, is the way customers download your game by default. So if we hit preview change now, uh, we can then just set this live. And this will immediately set the build live, so there's nothing to publish after this. So just be careful of that. However, if your game is not yet released, this won't make anything live yet for customers. All right, now that we've set that live, I've got Steam open here. Uh, I'll restart it just so it gets a fresh update of all the data. And now if I try to install the game, it'll actually tell me a disk size that's needed, which is about the same size that I saw before. got it installed. Uh, I can go and look to see if it's actually the right set of files. So everything that gets downloaded by Steam is always going to end up under the install folder and then Steam apps common and then that install folder for the app ID itself. So again, I've got all my files there. So that's really how easy it is to just do your initial packaging up of, for any game on Steam. Uh, and if I wanted to do an update for a game, that's also just as easy. For example, if I wanted to go in here, let's say I'm really on version two of my game. So then all I'd have to do is run the command again after I log in.
Now let's run that command. And if we refresh the builds tab here, we'll see there's a new build available. Uh, this is still basically going to show the same set of files, although one of the SHAs is going to be different now because I've actually changed one file. And if I go and set this as the default branch now, it'll just give me a little comparison of what the expected download size will be, which seems about right for the tiny file I changed. So now if we set this live, then go in Steam, And it just gave me a very small update, I'm assuming, which we can double check by looking at our folder here. And there it is, version two. So that's, again, how easy it is to kind of build and package your game on Steam and then how easy it is to do any future updates on Steam. So I hope that was useful for everyone. Uh, if you've got any more questions, feel free to check out the documentation. And we're also planning on doing more videos like this. So hope it helps.